So these fast-moving halo stars aren't the only weirdo ones. Now, look at this pattern again here. You see the fast-moving yep. stars, but is there something else you can see that's a bit odd here? Well, it does appear to be... There's a, is this a clump of stars moving? They're not as moving as fast as these halo stars, but there's definitely a group of bluish stars moving together. Yeah, these are called moving groups. Okay. And these are groups of stars. If you just look quickly in the sky, there's nothing obvious about them, but they're all moving in the same direction at the same speed. Yeah, yeah, so they're, they're moving at the same speed and very noticeable because it's kind of different from what the rest of the stars are doing. Yeah, so these, we know that stars aren't born by themselves. Yep. They're born in clusters. That's right. So here's a cluster of stars. We can see a number of these so-called open clusters. Yep. And what you get is a giant molecular cloud that collapses and produces maybe a few hundred or even a few thousand stars altogether. So they're all born essentially at the same time from that same cloud. Which also means they probably have the same chemical composition, which yep. is going to be very important. So you've got a bunch of stars formed at the same time, same age, same chemical composition, because they all come out of the same giant molecular cloud. And sometimes, like in this open cluster, they are still in the middle of that giant molecular cloud. Yep. So these have only been born pretty recently. And so that cloud is presumably still going to form even more stars and then... Well, maybe it's just it being blown away, because okay. once these stars light up, especially the O and B stars, their radiation in the wind will blow away the giant molecular cloud. Yep. So you can sometimes see them like in Orion where they're still forming yes. stars, or you can see it just after like they've torn the cocoon away, they've right. thrown the nursery, we've grown up now, but the debris Leaving of the, the nursery nests. is still That's around. Right. And some of these clusters stay together for a long time, they're actually gravitationally bound, so you see okay. this group of stars. Most of these open clusters are very young. I was going to say, yeah, so in order for them to still be bound, they have to probably most likely be young, right? Yeah, well, some of them last hundreds of millions of years, but generally speaking, once they're born, they were originally held together by the mass of the giant molecular yep. cloud. Once that's been blown away, there's, there's nothing. nothing to hold them together. So they drift apart, much like siblings often do. And but they don't, they, they, steer, they still stay in contact, right? They don't dramatically go off into other parts of the galaxy. Well, to begin with, they'll stay fairly close together and slowly drift apart. Uh -huh. But as time goes on, they might end up spread all the way around the galaxy, but they will all still be moving in the same speed, in roughly the same direction, and they all have the same chemical composition. So we still have these identifiers that we know kind of their, what family, what molecular cloud family yeah. they came from. So presumably when a, a cluster is very young, it's still in a giant molecular cloud. When it's a bit older, it's an open cluster. But if you go and look a few hundred million years later, it's probably going to be a okay. moving group of stars. It could be spread across half the sky, but because of their common motion, that we know that they're all in a family. And they would have the same chemical composition. Yep. And the Gaia spacecraft, which we talked a lot about, because it's really good at studying stars. Um, has it was as if it was built to study the motions of stars. Which, of course, it was. And the, all these colours we're seeing here are different moving groups. So each colour-coded is its own group they've identified moving in the, the same direction, same, the same speed. That's right. And what you can see is an awful lot of the stars that are apparently moving at random in the disk are actually groups yeah, yeah, that formed at some point in the past. and have, um, and they're now so spread out that any one location you might only see a handful of these things. But if you look over a large enough area, and as you said, very, very precisely like Gaia does, you can pick them up. Yes. And so normally one of these groups might still remain visible as a moving group for maybe a billion or two years. Yep. There's a lot of research about can we still pick them up longer than that. Okay. So for example, our own sun is you know, 4.6 billion years ago. So we presumably started off in a cluster, then we were in a moving group. But by now, our moving group, I mean, that's a lot of orbits of the Milky Way yeah. since then. Our Milky, our other stars that were born with us, our sun siblings, are now spread all around the Milky Way. And they've been disturbed too much in their orbits. We're not going to see them moving in a constant way. Mm -hmm. But they still will have the same chemical composition. Okay. Because remember, the new elements produced are only in the centre. The outer surface of the sun still reflects its birth composition. So if we look at a bunch of these stars, when we look at them at the outside, we see that original composition that created them. Yeah. And so this is a, a big research project at here at ANU called Galactic Archaeology. The idea being, can we actually identify the family tree of all the different stars and maybe find for our own sun that the stars that were born at the same time are looking for stars with all different elements, exactly the right compositions, and also probably break all the stars we can see up in a similar way. Yep. So for this, you have to get really good spectra of all these stars and measure the composition of dozens of elements. But in principle, we could tie together and work out you know, the ancestry of our Milky Way, essentially. And find basically every cluster that was ever here, and all the stars presumably came from some cluster at some point. And so that would really be like um, 
forming blow-by-blow blow account of how the whole Milky Way was put together. That's right. 